We are with the one and only out of Chicago, the windy city of Chicago, Dr. Charles Hayes, the founder of the Cosmopolitan Church of Prayer Choir. Dr. Hayes, let me ask you something. Are you, you're the pastor of? That's correct, the pastor, overseer, and founder. And founder, mm -hmm. and founder in what year? 1959, April the 28th. The last time you were here, you did something that really impressed me. You came out on the stage and you right away start acknowledging the Ward Singers and the Davis Sisters. And I said, this man goes back. He evidently knows some of these pioneers. Right. Well, I started into gospel music in 1947. You were a little kid. That's correct. I, I played keyboard, piano, really? yes. My father's a musician, and I played uh, keyboard, piano. And I had a group, and I used to play for the church choir where I was first saved that. Mount Olive Baptist Church in a little town called Keystone, Alabama. And I you played for the Alabama. Choir. I certainly am. Mm -hmm. Get out of here. Yeah. I didn't know that. I always uh -huh. assumed you were a Chicagoan. No. I'm from Alabama. So the family from Alabama. Yes. My roots are in Alabama, a little town called Verbena, Alabama. That's now, where I was, was your mom or dad singers? My father is a singer. My mother sang in the choir. My father is also a musician. Professional? Did he do anything professional? Uh, well, he played guitar. Okay. Yeah. For quartet or uh, quartet and rhythm and blues, he played all that. Really? Yes. What was his What's his name? Will. They call him Lil Will. Little Willie Hayes. Right. Little Will Hayes. Mm -hmm. Would he have any old records? No, he never got that far. He okay. He was always local. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you are a youngster there in Alabama. What year, how old were you when you came to uh, Chicago? I was like about 18 years old when I came to Chicago because I was just out of high school. Mm -hmm. I came out of high school in April of 1956, and I came to Chicago in August mm -hmm. of 56. What made you come to Chicago? Well, we were traveling with a group from Birmingham known as the Golden Voices of Birmingham. I was the musician. And we were en route to Los Angeles, California on a tour, and we got stranded in Chicago. This story seems all so familiar with many artists. Right. So you got stuck there and never left. We got stuck in Chicago, and there I got a job playing at a church, Redeeming Church of Christ, and I've been there ever since. Now, who befriended you when you got to Chicago? You're stranded. Somebody had to bring you there, right? Yes. Uh, when we had finished our engagement, it was just not enough money to go on, so uh, they came up, a uh, division in the group, and some went back to Alabama because they had jobs, and uh, I said, well, I'm out here, I might as well make the best out of it, so I stayed. In Were Chicago. you in the ministry at that time? No. 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 Uh, I, I started in the ministry uh, like in 1960, I started, and um, we started a prayer group in 1959, you know. In Chicago, it's funny, you can have prayer groups and things, but you can't get a church charter until you have seven people or more and what have been going for a while. I think that might be a, uh, another rule in other states, too, uh, Dr. Hayes. I think you have to have seven to actually start. Right. Them. You have to have a board of directors. Right. Mm -hmm. So here you are, 19 years old? I was 19. 19 years I, old. You're in Chicago. First time there, your right. first time there? My very first time. Parents are in Alabama. Right. Were they pleased with you moving up to Chicago? Well, not really. My mother always wanted me to stay around because I was the baby at that time. Oh. And she didn't want me to leave, but I, I felt that I was grown enough and it was time for me to be on my own. Mm -hmm. So you're in Chicago, you start playing for a church. When you got there then, you had an opportunity to see the Davis Sisters, I guess. Well, uh, I had worked with the Davis Sisters in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. Uh, you got a harmonette uh, down there? Yes, the harmonettes used to bring them to Birmingham for their anniversaries right. and the ward singers. Uh, now, if you had a ticket with the ward singers, the Davis sisters, and the caravans and the harmonettes, it was a total sellout. And people would be standing in right. lines, waiting, trying to get in to stand up. You know, people of Dr. Hayes here in Philadelphia find that hard to believe that there was a time when gospel was so big, people would come after work Stand around the walls outside the building trying to Bear get Very true. Very true. And the Ward Singers of Philadelphia was one of the top groups of that time. Did you see Marion and Francis and Kitty? All of them. You saw the old ones I remember there. when Claire Ward got Marion Williams from Florida. Oh, that nobody ever talked about I that. I was back there when Madame Gertrude was singing with the Ward Singers. That's the three of them, yeah? Yeah. 
the mama was singing. Right. And then, you know, they split up and the daddy had a group. Uh, I ain't never knew daddy, daddy had a group. Daddy had a group. Uh, one of Clara, George Ward had a group. One of Clara's sisters. Uh, she, Willa, she only had Willa, one Willa. Yeah. Willa had, it, had her group, right. the Ward singing. Right. Well, uh, Gertrude was with Clara and the daddy was with Willa. There was two sets of Ward singing. Well, you know, at one time there were three sets. Well, I knew there was it Willa, you. there was Gertrude, and there was Clara. All three of them had their own set. Okay. But that that was after the split with Marianne Francis and Kitty. But you're in Chicago, my God. You got Thomas Dorsey there. You got Roberta Martin there. You got everybody there in Chicago. That's correct. Well, did you meet these people? Uh, sure. I worked with Mrs. Martin and and Thomas A. Dorsey. You know, uh, they were over what you call that mass choir that they have, the Singing Union. Right. And, uh, you Thomas remember the Singing Union? Sure. I worked right along with them. Sally Martin have come to my storefront church and sing for nothing. She was a comical lady, wasn't yes. she? <laughs> she was from Georgia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a tough one. Yeah. Roberta Martin and the Roberta Martin singers, all of them have come to the storefront churches and sing for nothing. Nothing. That's nothing. Right. Nothing. Ten nothing. cents. That's very true. Mahalia Jackson, right. she used to sing for a quarter. So she was a beautician. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happened that you said you were at Redeeming, what's the name of it? Redeeming Church of Christ. You're Bishop still there? Allison. Oh, no, I'm pastor. But you got your own church. church. Right, when, for now, 35 years. Right. When did you actually start the Ch Cosmopolitan Church of Prayer? Well, we was chartered in 1959, okay. April the 20th, 1959. So you had your seven members then? Right. Okay. Right. And you could play the piano. I was so a you musician. You had to depend on no musician. I, I, I started that's, that's with a right family. There. Right. Started with a large family, uh, was the members of the church. And they would sing and they would usher, whatever had to do. This same family did it all. Faithful. That's right. The McElroy family and the Avent family. Hmm. You end up with this fantastic choir. Whenever I pick up a CD, when everyone comes to the station and says Cosmopolitan, Two words come to mind, power and fire. They always come to mind whenever I just hear the name Cosmopolitan. I know it's going to be hard. Well, that's because we're a church choir, not a community choir. And everybody in our choir has to be a member of the church and say we are committed. We sing under the anointing. They we don't, don't just come there and no, sing when the no, Sunday no, is time no, to sing. No, and that's it. definitely not. We don't have that. We've never had that in 35 years. You have to be a member of the church. You have to be committed. You have to come to Bible class. Good. You have to attend Sunday school. You have to be faithful to your church. And that's the first start. Pay your tithes and offerings. If you have it. You know, and anybody that joins the church, they can't just get right in the choir. They be auditioned, and there's a waiting period. Let me ask you something. When a person comes down the aisle on a Sunday after a service or during service and decides to give their life to Christ, Dr. Hayes, do you take them right in? We if they say Christian experience. We ex we extend to them the right hand of fellowship, and we take them in, and they go with the church clerk, and it's placed in a computer. But we also have orientation classes with these people because we need to know something about their background, where they're coming from, why did they chose to come to Cosmopolitan right. Church? Good, good. Uh, there was a time when you just took anybody in and just put them in an auxiliary, and, no. and it creates no, a problem. It, now no. they're te at least what we're doing here is. We're taking them in there, and they come to new members class. They have to learn. They sure. have to find out what it's all about. Sure, or else course. they can get them to the wrong crowd, and you got a problem. The right. pastor got a problem on his hands. Certainly has. So you get together this choir now. When this choir first got organized, how many voices did you have? About five. About five. When three sisters, three sisters really and two brothers. Big. Well, we didn't get big, I would say, until our first hit record came out, Everything's All Right, and there was a cut on that record, Jesus can work it out. My God. That and Maceo was, had already did that. Right. And we came behind him and did it with a new arrangement. And that is really what put us in the mainstream. It was the rage. Uh, you have taken, and I have listened to, Cousin Paul can take anyone else's song, and once they got, once you finish with it, it's like we never heard it before. Right. It's just a gift you had. The first time you came to Philadelphia, you all sang uh, Redeem, which had been recorded by James Cleveland on the 4th of May. Totally different. Mm -hmm. Totally different. So the Lord has really blessed you. And I guess being that you are musical yourself, uh, I work close you, you have them. ministry of music, right. right? I work close with the musicians. Okay. They that just can't right. sing anything. It's going to come through you. That's right. We're not in the contemporary area. I can We're tell. Saying that. 
we don't have to worry when we put on something by Cosmopolitan because we know it ain't gonna be nothing lukewarm. It's okay. gonna be gutsy. And now that I know that you are around in Alabama, that sort of explains why I'm getting this traditional sound right. in all your records. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, where we came from, you know, it was a very poor family and poverty was a major thing there. So uh, the consolation we got was singing gospel music, you know, and we couldn't go nowhere but to church and the school because you couldn't go up in the, the town after dark. Well, then the church was like your center of activities. Sure. Even after service, you'd have activities for young people. Right, to stay around, and they would have mm -hmm. dinner on the ground right. and all that kind of stuff. And it was like a family thing. Yeah. Everybody in the church was one family. Right. Do you miss that now? Do you find it's missing? Well, in the big cities, it's somewhat missing, unless you've got a pastor that's from the rural area or from the country like I am, to keep that spirit motivated, because you've got a lot of people that comes from the South to the north and when they get there they just fall in line with whatever's yeah, going on exactly. but they would like to feel that every now and then or go back to that right. and we do do you find yourself being a, a strict no nonsense pa no nonsense pastor well we uh you ever we, have to put anybody off your choir no we have order and we tell them in our church your life put you in your life put you out and we have do's and don'ts and when you violate the do's and the don'ts uh, more than three times, you automatically put yourself out. <laughs> yeah. do, does the pastor do it? We don't have to put you out. You, you know that that is told to you when you are auditioned for the choir. See, we have printed uh, bylaws, okay. and we have a printed form that the person fills out talking about their job and everything, they, the time available for them to be in rehearsal because you have to be in rehearsal to be in the choir. Yeah. <laughs> if someone does not come to rehearsal, Dr. Hayes, you let them sing the next day? No. You have to make rehearsal because if you don't make no rehearsal, you don't sing until you come back to the next rehearsal. And if you be too long coming back, somebody have your seat. <laughs> it, it, I know it's time for you to go. It's been a real pleasure being with you today and uh, we look for some great things from Cosmopolitan as usual. We're getting ready to go down now. God bless you. Thank you. We've been talking to Dr. Father Charles Hayes. Thank you.